great. Uh, so we're here to talk about uh, Layout Builder. And I called this Site Building 2.0 because I really hope I'm about to change everything you think you know about building stuff in Drupal. Um, so a uh, quick bit about me and who I am. I'm Chris Vanderwater. I'm one of the CTools co-maintainers. Uh, I have contributed to Drupal 8 as significantly as my life would allow me to. <laughs> Uh, and I have been focused during much of that time on page layout. Uh, in fact, uh, for most of my Drupal career, I've been focused very heavily on the page layout tools that we use on a daily basis. Um, side note, I also helped author the plugin system that's in Drupal 8, so if you love that or hate that, it is my fault amongst a couple other people's. Um, and I'm a software engineer over at Acquia. Uh, so, how about we just get right to it? Who in here has actually used uh, Layout Builder at all? Anyone? Anybody played with it? Okay, handful of people have. Um, so for those of you who haven't, uh, I was actually gonna start at like the halfway mark in my demo, but I decided that likely a lot of you hadn't gotten to play with it at all. So we're gonna start from zero. And that means I'm gonna be moving quick, but you know there will be time for questions, I think. And um, since it's a live demo, uh, A, that means that there could be issues, uh, and B, I will solve them quickly, and C, uh, yeah, just feel free to hop up and ask a question. I will be more than happy to pause and, and kind of go over it because it's not like a video. We can totally interact with this, okay? Um, so a few things before I start the demo, one, uh, this is Drupal 8.5. It has one patch applied to it. That patch is exclusively made up of CSS. So nothing functionally different here. I also have one module that I put in here. That module is the layouts, plural, layouts module. Uh, it's on D.0. Uh, I haven't committed everything you'll see in here today to it yet, but I will do so in probably the next 24 hours. Um, so you can totally play with this. Um, I also have a custom theme, as you can clearly see. Uh, I've spent a very long time on this theme, so nobody gets to mock me for it. And, um, and yeah, you'll get to see more of that theme and how it works as we dig in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, kind of just jump in here. And so the first thing we're gonna do, uh, well, actually, uh, as you can see, I have two nodes. One's the Milky Way, and the other is Orion. And, these are just totally default. I haven't installed Layout Builder yet, so this is as vanilla of a Drupal 8 install as you could possibly imagine. Um, so we're gonna come in here, and we're gonna go ahead and turn on the Layout Builder. Um, now, when we turn on the Layout Builder, it does a couple of really interesting things. Uh, the most important of which is that over on our content types, if I come in here to manage display, this page looks a little different. Now, if you've ever been to this page, what this page typically contains is it contains a list of all of the fields that are attached to your, um, your node of this type. And you can drag them up and down to sort them, and you can mess with their, the field formatters and, and try to change things that way. But it's exclusively like a top to bottom kind of sorting mentality that's built into Drupal core. And so we got rid of that and we stuck a manage layout button here, which if I click, is gonna pop me into a, a new user interface here. And you'll see that I have an image, because articles have images typically, and I have some text, and I have some tags, and then I have a placeholder for comments. Now, what's really cool about this is that um, it's all drag and droppable, right? Just right out of the box. And what's also really cool about this is that I'm not limited to the one section that I've got here. I can go ahead and I can add some other sections. Huh, that's interesting. Excuse me for a moment. <laughs> Let's see what happens with that. Better? Okay. Um, all right, let's refresh this page real quick. 
All right, well, I don't know what's up, and I'm not gonna worry about it. So I can go ahead and I can do something like add a two column layout to this, and you'll see I now just got four more regions added to this, and I can do stuff like drag my text over here, and I can drag my image up here, which is kind of difficult because of how much text there is. And you can see that like this is core right now. I actually haven't installed that extra module I was talking about yet. So that's actually fairly fascinating uh, and cool. And if I were to come in here and I were to hit save on this, we could then go and we could visit one of our nodes and our node is now going to be laid out that way, right? So this is the layout we just specified in here. Who in here has actually like used Panelizer? Anybody? Hey, a lot of you. Cool. All right. So hopefully this looks kind of familiar. Yeah, maybe. Um, so let's go and <laughs> enable the module that I provided here, which is the layouts module. And now if I will come back into my content types and go into the manage display here, what's gonna happen is I'm actually going to have uh, a whole new set of layouts. So these were all not here before. And so one of the things I really dislike about what we're shipping in core, and we were kind of forced to ship it this way because uh, these layouts that we've got in core have been there for a whole release. So we couldn't just remove them because other people were probably using them. But what we, we want to do is we want to provide layouts that are, are very easy to think of as like almost a row of the page. It's a row of content on your page. Um, and so if I want to, I can come in here and I can say that I want like a 3366 um, layout. And if I do that, then, you know, I can go ahead and move the same content around into that, and I can get rid of old and busted here. And we can kind of move some of these other things around a little bit here. There we go. And I'm gonna get rid of comments for the moment. So if I save that, we can come back over to one of our nodes here and we can see that we have this nice 3366 layout. So, yay, amazing. <laughs> All right, cool. Enough of that, let's go do something cool. All right, so uh, not only though can we affect the actual uh, default view mode, we can go ahead and we can go customize the teasers if we want to. So I can go do this, and I'm just gonna throw that whole thing away, because really, who cares? And uh, just to prove the point, let's do the opposite. And so now I'm gonna do a 6633 in this, and I will go ahead and I'll add the body over here. And I'm not gonna display the title, because genuinely, who does that? And I'm gonna stick the image in here. And I'm also not gonna display the title. And maybe we go with like, uh, you know, large. Cool. And so now my main node page looks this way. But if I go back to the front page and I refresh here, I'm going to have the flip, the inverse of this, right? And of course, that's a lot more text than I intended to get. So we can come back into teaser here. And we can go ahead and configure this block. And I can do like a trimmed or sum tr bleh, summary or trimmed. And we can go ahead and hit save on that. And now I should get something slightly different here. Right, so I've got view mode level control of layouts. And what's I think maybe more important to notice that I glossed over a little bit was I had more than one layout functioning on a page at the same time. So you can layer layouts on top of each other instead of like in Panelizer where you pick a layout and you're stuck with it. And then if you want to change layouts, you have to figure out how to transition that content and these sorts of things. You can just add as many layouts as makes sense to a given page inside of Layout Builder, okay? So, um, so this is, really useful to us because, as I said, it gives us the ability to think of a page as layout sections. Um, but 
for those of you, again, who have used Panelizer, which was most of the room, uh, you'll know that there's a really big feature inside of Panelizer where I can make any individual node look the way that I want. So in order to get that, I'm just gonna check mark this, which says allow each content item to have its layout customized. And we're gonna hit save. And now we can really go rock and roll with this thing. So let's go visit our Milky Way node again. And you'll see I now have a layout tab associated to this. And the layout tab is the exact same administration we've been playing in up at the defaults, except it's exclusive to this node, right? So anything I'm about to do here only applies to this node. Uh, and this is very interesting. Now, before I get too deep into this, I, I wanna point out that like, if I say I want a one column added to this, I can just do that right here and it gets added, right? Instantly. Yeah, remove that empty thing. But if I tell it that I wanna use one of mine down here, like maybe this 6633, it asks me a question first. Okay, and that question is really interesting because this is configurable. You can build your own layouts that are configurable and require input from the user before being placed. That gives us the ability to do some pretty interesting things. For example, uh, right now, my content goes all the way sidebar to sidebar, like it fills up the entire area of my screen. But what if I didn't want to do that? What if I wanted to maybe make it narrow, right? Now, I, I just wanna point out something. This is in the administrative end. And if we come over here to the front end, I, it is not reflecting the changes that we're making right now, okay? These changes exist only in the administrative end until we hit save. So let's do something more. Um, I'm just adding classes to this that I've already predefined. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make this a, uh, oh, that's good, Chris. Um, blue section, I forget what I named this. Ha, got it. All right, so you'll see now I have this nice gradiated background sitting in here. The text changed color to be more in line with the, the style that I had already applied to this. My links changed, all of this stuff changed because I did actually invest a little bit of time in that completely blank white theme, right? So this is all very nice and wonderful and if I hit save on this, this is the actual published version of this node now. So that's node two. If we go look at node one, you'll note that node one hasn't changed at all. It's got the same style that is being inherited from the default. So we could change it to if we wanted to, and we will just because. So I'm also gonna make this one narrow, but I'm gonna make it a red section. All right, that was pretty great. And maybe on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do We'll also make this a narrow blue section. And now I'm gonna add like the comments to it. And of course the good old trusty tried and true powered by Drupal. <laughs> awesome, so let's save on that. And here's my Orion page, right? With its comments and it's powered by Drupal and its actual text and everything else. Right, so this is pretty great. And I think it's important to note that the theme that underlies this, while honestly very simple, um, is just one, one column of regions, like actual theme regions. There are four here. I have a header region, I have a pre-content region, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes. I have a content region and then I have a footer region. Everything you've seen up until this moment is like the pre-content and the content region. Those sit on top of each other. I'm, this isn't a multi-region setup in like a traditional theme sense, yeah. Um, can I get you to go to the mic so that the recording will hear you? Yeah, if you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer them as we go. Just walk up to the mic, and if I feel like we're behind on time, I, I might slow that down. But yeah, go ahead. You had the um, specialized layout for one node. <clears throat> Is there any way that you can copy that layout? Say I wanted 12 nodes with that layout, and I didn't want to have to go and do that for each single one. Is there um, a way I can bundle that style and apply it to another node? 
Yeah, so that's a, a really great question. Um, the simple answer is no. The more complex answer is maybe. Um, <laughs> so, so no, I, I don't have that out of the box today. But what I showed at the very beginning was that you could actually build a view mode and attach any sort of styles you wanted to it. So um, something Display Suite does, which we do not do, is that it gives you the ability to actually select the view mode you want to use for a given entity when you're displaying it. And if we were to invest time in building that, then view modes would actually become like different groups of defaults. And you could pick the one you wanted, right? Um, so no, I don't have that. But we have discussed it. And I think it's probably a mid-tier hanging fruit. I don't, I don't think anybody says that. Um, but <laughs> you get what I mean. Um, so. Unfortunately, everything you've seen me do thus far has been completely node-based. And this is actually one of the things that like Panelizer suffers from pretty heavily, is it'll handle with nodes, and it'll handle users, and it'll hand handle taxonomy terms. But that's all it handles, because it's all it knows how to handle. We had to write plugins for each one of those things. But when we wrote Layout Builder, we took kind of a different approach to it. So Layout Builder isn't only for nodes. Um, Layout Builder can be used on uh, all sorts of different things. And the one I really want to highlight is Custom Blocks. Who in here has used the Custom Block system in Drupal Core? Okay. Um, now, the Custom Block system it, it, I, I love and I hate. We will talk about the reasons I love it today and none of the reasons I hate it, because um, I don't have time for that. But uh, I've got two block types in here. The basic block is the one that core ships with. It just has text in there. And then I made a bare layout. Now, if we go in and we manage fields on this, you'll see I have absolutely nothing. Like I said, I was starting at virtually zero in order to show you how to build this up. So I'm going to come into this block type, and I'm going to say that I want to allow each one of these blocks to be customized from a layout perspective. And so now, if I go create one of these blocks, we could do something fun. So I went ahead and I created a header block. But there's no actual form there, really. All it was was a title. And if I come in and I edit it now, I'm going to have a layout tab. All right. Does this remind anybody of anything? We used to have something way back in the Drupal 7 days that we called mini panels. We also had something called fieldable panel panes. And this is both all in one thing. So I can go ahead and add a section to this. And I've been kind of skipping over some of the sections I had because I was holding them back in reserve. Uh, because this is where things start to get really fun. So what if we were to create a section that had no regions? This section is what I call the image section. And what it allows me to do is it allows me to use an entity reference in order to specify a media entity for a background. So if I wanted to, I could say I want to use that media. I want it at 400 pixels. And I want to use the background image style, which since most of you have probably built image styles, I did not spend time doing in front of you. And I'm going to hit Add Section. And you'll see just like that, I got a parallax background image in here. But honestly, I'm not super thrilled with the parallax, so we're just going to turn that off. And I'm going to hit Update. And now I have a non-parallax background image sitting here. OK, so that's kind of fun. <laughs> but there's a lot of other like Chrome-level elements that I should probably be concerned about here. And the first two, uh, to my mind, are probably my logo and my navigation menu. So let's do that, too. Uh, and I'm expressing these as custom layouts as well. So I created a navigation layout type in here, which pay attention to this one, because when I get into the code side, we're going to look at this one. Um, and what it says is, hey, tell me about your logo media, which I'm going to say is that. It says, tell me what image style you want the logo at, which I'm going to do as a thumbnail. And then it wants to know what menu I want, which is also an entity reference. So I can tell that I want the main navigation menu. And we're going to hit Add Section on this. And you'll see just like that, I have a logo with my main navigation. right? A couple of things I set up that, again, were fairly simple things that you've probably done a million times. But I'm using them in a way I hope you've never seen. Otherwise, I would be very disappointed. 
So we're going to hit save layout on that, and I'm going to come into structure block layout, our old old nemesis, I mean friend, and we're going to go ahead and place the header, which is right here. And I'm going to turn off the title, because really, who wants that? And now, if we come back to our front page, wow, that did not work the way I wanted at all. <laughs> Thank you, Safari. Uh, okay. Cool. So now I, I have this header, and that's pretty great. But honestly, it's a little much. Like, it's way far to the left. And I can't say that I'm particularly thrilled about that. So why don't I come back into my block layout here. And what we're going to do is we're going to edit this again. And this time, I'm going to configure this and tell it I want it to be narrow. And I want it to be a header section, I believe is what I called that. You know, gonna have to look at my CSS. <coughs> oh, there we go. All right, we'll do that one more time. Sorry, I used Chrome for all of this, and it had all my autocompletes already, and then I had too many tabs open in Chrome, so I switched. All right, let's try that again. Hey, here we go. And so, really? <laughs> Thank you, Drupal. So now I have this header section that actually scrolls with me, and like, I haven't really had to do a heck of a lot. What I really did was I spent a little bit of time prepping the components I wanted to show, some corresponding CSS for those things that I could apply arbitrarily if I want, and now I, I built a site in front of you all in like 22 minutes, right? Like. So what I want to spend the rest of this time doing is one, digging through some of the code that makes this possible because um, like if I said, oh, you can do this, you probably think that it might be daunting. And indeed, it might be if you've never done it, but it's actually pretty simple. And on top of that, uh, I think like with just a little help from a code friend, if you aren't a code friend, uh, you can probably get really, really far. Likewise, I think it gives you maybe a different way to think about your CSS because um, to my own mind, in Drupal, a lot of times we're playing defense on CSS. We're seeing what it is that Drupal spits at us and then picking selectors from that in order to get things applied. And rather than doing that, I'm telling the system what I want it to be and moving on with my life. And that's a really powerful place to be because I can do something like this. Um, you probably can't see that, so I'll make it really big. Is that better? All right. Can anybody see my line numbers? What's the number on the bottom? 55. Yeah, that, that whole site we just built is 55 lines of custom CSS. Okay? Which is really, like, I'm, I haven't ever made a site with that few lines of CSS before. I'm totally sure that many people have. But for me, this was kind of a revelation. When I got done with that, I was like, wow, that's maintainable. Right? So, what? Yeah, sure. Well, so, so no, that's a great question. Great, great question. Uh, yeah, so the question was, is it responsive? And the answer to that is, uh, yeah, some, right? There we go. My, you know, fixed title bars with the administrative bar get a little fidgety, but that's only on the administrator. So yeah, I mean, absolutely, it, it's responsive out of the box because the layouts we're using are responsive out of the box, right? And that's actually really important. Um, so before I dig into uh, PHP code, let's go look at CSS. Um, in fact, let's just look at a layout in its entirety. Um, so here's my layouts module, this guy right here. 
Um, and you'll notice it has a layouts directory in it. That's kind of confusing, layouts, layouts. Uh, and though inside of that are all of the different layouts that I support. Um, now these are all documented in a layouts YAML file. So this thing tells me about every single layout that I'm providing. It tells the system what sort of regions there are in it, um, which for some reason broke before I started demoing it to you. And it tells what class to use. Now, this is important because you don't have to specify the class that your layout is gonna use. I'm specifying it because we're doing that configurable craziness, but if you don't specify it, it runs through Drupal's normal one and you get all the same processing as normal. And these layouts are actually really, really simple. Um, other than, we'll look at the navigation one. So this is my definition for the navigation one. And this is kind of pretty stereotypical like Drupal hook info like level stuff. There's nothing super complicated here. If you open up the layout discovery module inside of core and look at its layouts definitions, you, you can copy and paste and like tweak a little bit and you'll get really far doing that, okay? But um, the corresponding twig is also rather simple. So, I mean, that's the totality of it, right? Like the comment is almost as big as the code is. And this is responsive out of the box because of the corresponding CSS for this. Um, we're gonna come back and we're gonna actually dig into this twig file just a little bit in a minute, but I'll show you the CSS. Uh, so that CSS is 40 lines of code, right? And so again, we're just kind of building these layouts to be responsive on their own as we're going. Uh, so. It just worked out of the box. I really didn't have to do anything extra when she asks, is it responsive? Yes, it is, right? You can do that in 40 lines of, of CSS on a per layout definition basis. And then every time you use that layout, hey, it's still responsive, right? So it's really beneficial. And again, if you look at what Core's doing, Core's doing this exact same sort of stuff, these really small twig files, these really small CSS files that are very granular, easy to replicate, easy to use. Um, that, that's literally like the whole of the front end or side of this equation. You can build as many layouts as you want that way and if they aren't configurable, that's the whole story. That's what you have to do. Clear cache, the show up in layout builder, okay? But if you wanna do something kinda crazy, um, I'm gonna spend just a few minutes looking at the code. How many people in here consider themselves to be like PHP code level people at all. Okay, that's like half the room, that's good. Um, so for those of you who aren't, don't glaze over on me because I promise I'll be quick through this section and there are a couple of key takeaways from it. So the first important one is that my class here, this class that runs our navigation, the one with the logo and the main menu in it, it's extending Drupal's normal default class for layouts, okay? So there are no big surprises here. You get like 99.9% .9 of everything you need right out of the box by just doing that. And we're just gonna add a little bit of sugar on top of it. And then the next important thing is we tell it that it implements the plugin form interface. Now a whole bunch of plugins implement plugin form interface, but when layouts do it, Layout Builder recognizes it as being a configurable layout. And that is super important because it means that that sidebar opens up when you try to add it to the system. If you make a required field in there, they can't add the section until they fill out the field, okay? And this gives us a whole host of possibilities. Um, I will circle back around to that. Um, but this implements that interface and that interface consists of actually building the form, which is what the build configuration form method does. And there's nothing crazy here. This is form API. If you've ever written form API, you can look at this and read it relatively quickly. It says like, oh, I have a form logo component. It's entity autocomplete to media. Cool, cool story. Style, entity autocomplete to image styles. Menu, entity autocomplete to menus. Maybe you're seeing a pattern here. Right, uh, I don't have anything complicated in my validation hook or my submission hook. This is dead simple stuff. Everything complicated is sitting right here in the build. And the only reason this is complicated is because menus are hard, right? So I grab my logo, I grab my image style, I get a source from it, and I build a little markup because I am not trying to do this cleanly, right? It's proof of concept. I do all of my menu stuff, and then we get the menus build array. And we attach these things into the build array here, and by doing this, 
da 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 da, they're gonna show up over in that twig. So content, logo, that's the logo we just looked at. Same thing with menu here. And then down here, I actually added a, a, a region that could be used just like regions from other things. So if I wanted to go back to it, I could do something like this. I could say like, oh hey, we do actually have a region attached to my header. So I could come in here and I could like add messages to it. Now, full disclosure, this is an experimental module and there's still a couple of bugs. Most of these bugs have to do with the strange nature of certain blocks in core, like don't try to place the page title. It's gonna go badly for you. <laughs> it's on our short list of things to fix, but it's kind of a big deal. Uh, messages, you can place them, but they're not gonna show up unless you have messages. Uh, we're gonna try to get placeholders in for anything that wouldn't show normally, and we have a couple of places where we've already succeeded at doing that. Um, so, if I save this, I can come over here and I can edit the Milky Way. Who has ever said those words before? And I can hit save. And you'll see now I, I have my messages with me. And of course they scroll with me, which is really cool until you get a really big debug message and can't see any of your content. Um, but as a proof of concept, it's kind of fun and interesting to do this. Um, so I, I guess all of that to say, like I literally showed you every nuance involved in doing what I just did on screen, right? Um, and so I'm here kind of to pitch an idea, and this idea is a relatively simple idea, which is that um, when we built layout sections, most of us on the team were hyper-focused on doing something that would allow us to replace things like Display Suite and Panelizer. What we wanted was a system where you could define new regions on a page and then place blocks into them. But in the process, we defined a whole new page level element that you can add any sort of configuration you want to. So what it gives you the ability to do is begin building up a visual language library of section components that you can stack on a page and make them meaningful to any given site. Um, I have arbitrary CSS assignments in here where I just, you know, specify whatever class I want and hopefully there's CSS to back that up. But you could make a select list or a multi-select list of CSS classes that are guaranteed to exist and really lock down the users so that they can only pick things that are going to work together. This is a really, really powerful paradigm that gives you unprecedented level of control over every page element on the page, right? Um, so I'm really open to questions at this point and I'm happy to dig into like any more of the demo and show things. Um, so yeah, feel free. Uh, Two questions. So, uh, one is the uh, configuration of this exportable, and what about per node configuration? Okay. Uh, yes and no. Uh, anything that appears on a config entity is exportable because it's on a config entity, and anything that appears on a content entity is not, which actually leads me into a whole other set of answers that you did not ask. Um, <laughs> This is a field. When it's deployed to the node or the block or the term um, or any other content entity, let me repeat that, any other content entity, users, terms, nodes, comments, files, I haven't tried that, media, uh, paragraphs. Yeah, no, I, could, I, I can and have done paragraph layouts so that I don't have to do nested, 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 nested paragraphs. I can just make a paragraph laid out however I want and make one type with a layout. Done, right? Uh, but it is a field and it is a blob field which some people might go, ooh, but uh, we just serialize all of the, the data in there and that means that every time you change it, I can't today, but I have proven that we have the capability. We'll track the revisions on it. You can revert back in time through all of the layouts you've ever had, right? Um, we didn't do it yet because revisionability is kind of in flux in core and how we want to do that. Oh, and by the way, it's multilingual too. 
So if you want a right to left, left to right distinction, you can just say like, oh, let's translate this node into whatever that language is, and then you can go into the layout section of that translation and, and edit it. Again, that's a patch that's sitting in the issue queue, but we have test coverage to prove that this stuff works so that once this module is not experimental, we can deliver multilingual, we can deliver revisionable layouts to any entity that supports those things in the system. Great, thanks. And uh, second question, what about the titles? Can those be added to the layouts and moved? The page title? Uh, the, the node titles. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't try that. Um, <laughs> so, no, it's a totally fair question. Uh, you'll recall I mentioned that I had four regions in this theme. I had a header, a pre-content, a content, and a footer. The pre-content is where I stuck the title and the tabs because I can't effectively place title or tabs right now, and I need both of them on the page. So there's still some stuff to negotiate. We're aware of these things. We're working on them. But if you want to use it today, and I would encourage that because, in my opinion, it is probably the most capable page layout utility at your disposal in core or contrib, um, and I'm a maintainer of a significant number of the ones in contrib, uh, I would heavily suggest at least beginning to play with this and be coming up to speed on it. Yeah. Thanks for your work on this, Chris. Uh, Happy to do it. But uh, I didn't do it alone. A lot of other people helped make this happen. Um, I'm not going to try to name them all while I'm on stage because that would go badly, but we had an awesome team, and uh, I'd be more than happy to point people at any of those people, and we will be doing a sprint on Friday if you want to come and hang out with us. We will also be trying to make like a lot of beginner level issues that have high impact. So. Have, have you taken a, a look at all at uh, the Gutenberg editor for WordPress? Yes, yes I have. And how would you describe how this compares? Anything that we're missing? I love that question. Um, so, I, no, like I genuinely love that question. Um, so, uh, who in here has looked at Gutenberg? Okay, that's almost no one. Um, so, Gutenberg is like, well, okay, who in here has used paragraphs? Okay, that's a lot more people. All right, Gutenberg's like a really flashy version of paragraphs. Um, if you shipped a bunch of paragraph types that made some sense and were all one level deep and you didn't nested, nested, nested thing, um, that would be essentially what Gutenberg is. It, this is my opinion when I look at it. Um, so can I do that today? No. Uh, do I want to? Yes. And we actually have issues in the issue queue for this. Um, so. I said I wasn't going to talk about the things that bother me about custom block, but I guess I'm going to do that. Um, custom block is a really interesting thing because what it allows you to do is it allows you to define different fieldable types of blocks. It allows you to put content into those things, and then it allows you to place them. It does not allow you to suggest where you want to place something, what thing, oh, that thing, and here's content, right, which is a completely inverted sort of workflow and is the one everyone actually wants. Moreover, if you want to do this everywhere on a really big site, you end up with an awful lot of blocks, which is not good. I've worked with sites that have over 2,000 custom blocks in them, and stuff gets bad real quick. Um, so the custom block system is actually really great for doing something like, oh, that header I just did, which I only have one of, and I will probably only have a few of. These are the ideas of reusable blocks. But when we get into non-reusable blocks, we probably want all of the same block types at our disposal. And so um, uh, over a year ago now, one, one or two years ago, Adam, are you in here? Adam, Adam Honig? Nope. Uh, well, Adam Honig and I, set off on a trip to go create what I called inline blocks. And the idea behind inline blocks was essentially to build a, a shadow set of entities that followed whatever you did to custom blocks at like the typing layer, so that we ended up with all the same bundles, with all the same fields, with all the same configuration. But when you tried to call save on them, they didn't save. So they didn't go into the database anywhere. And instead, what we did was we called git config on them. And they serialized the entity to an array. And we treated it as configuration, which we could save directly into the layout. So now the blocks themselves are revisionable with the node. They don't have an extra tracking table to keep track of their revisions. And this is really ridiculously powerful, um, both from a translation and a revision perspective. But also, it means that you can visit any page you want, add whatever blocks you want to it, and no one ever the wiser. It doesn't affect the system in the same way. 
Um, so this is actually where we want to go. There's an issue in the core issue queue right now pushing us this direction. Um, and Samuel Mortensen has spent a ton of time uh, helping to make that happen. Um, I don't know if it's too ambitious to hope for it in 8.6, but my personal hope is for it in 8.6. Don't take that to the bank. It's not worth anything. And yeah, that would give me more than future parity with Gutenberg. It, it would put us above Gutenberg because I can place any block in the system. So this would be, you know, it would be all about what kind of block types you defined at that point as to what you had available. And you could certainly mirror everything Gutenberg does out of the box, plus have all of the other blocks that core ships with. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, an another sort of uh, usability issue uh, with many of the current layout systems in Drupal 8. Let, 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 let's say you have like a content type called a landing page or something. Mm -hmm. Because it, they're all still ba built on top of like the legacy node idea, yep. you, you have to create this node with nothing but a title and you create that on the form, and then you're in this different place where you actually build your content. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so just to like elaborate on that a little bit more, um, this is kind of an idea of like structured data versus unstructured data. And Drupal traditionally doesn't really do unstructured data, but that whole thing I just described with your Gutenberg question actually puts us in a world where we can do completely unstructured data. You could totally have like a custom node type that has no fields attached to it whatsoever, except the title, and do whatever you want in the layout system and add these custom inline blocks to it. And you know, maybe I want an image here and I want a list of links over here and I want some text here and let's stick an ad there and some more text and like these things become possible, right? Um, but the question you're asking is really one more about like the editorial experience of doing this and saving and then doing that. And I would say like we're aware, but we're not necessarily trying to solve that problem yet because we need to get this house in order. Um, I demoed something roughly the same when I created the header image because I went and created it, named it header, hit save, and then was like back on my block content page and had to go edit it to get to the layout tab. And yeah, it's annoying, but um, I, I think there is certainly room for improvement there, but it's not on the short list of things to do right now. Okay. Yes? Hello, thank you. Uh, I noticed when you installed it that this is still experimental. It and absolutely is. The space that I work in is very uncomfortable with experimental. Uh, do you have a, even a good estimate of time frame of when you think it'll transition out of experimental? W one would hope within the next two releases since that's how experimental modules have to work. <laughs> Otherwise, I have a very big problem on my hands. <laughs> Um, that being said, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier and underscore it. In my opinion, this is the most stable, most capable page layout mechanism in all of Core or Contrib. Okay, yeah, thank you for that amazing work that you've, you've been doing here. Um, you mentioned the inline blocks. I, I don't know if I quite understood it, but are you saying they're node sort of scoped blocks that you can place on the page that are... Yeah, they're, they're scoped yeah. to whatever entity you're laying yeah. out at the time. So you could do blocks inside of blocks, actually. Cool. And would you see that kind of replacing paragraphs as, as a way to, to build I would base? see that definitely competing with the paragraphs um, ideology. Uh, will it replace it? No, probably not. I suspect paragraphs is here to stay in one form or another. But my genuine hope is that um, I can put forth a tool set that helps people not need to do things like entity reference revisions. Uh, where you know you're keeping track of a whole other table of data just to know what blocks are currently related to this node. That seems like really unnecessary and over the top. Um, it, it, and and unfortunately, it's totally necessary and not at all over the top with the way that's constructed. And we've built something that's completely different uh, that gets a lot of the same sort of values. At a completely different like um, like cost. Like there's certainly a cost here because we're serializing everything to the database, um, but like that doesn't worry me so much because we have things like page cache. So we only hit that once in a while, and you know there's like there's so much benefit to that 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 I really think what we've got here is is a very good alternative. All right, and just just two very quick questions. If you are in the paradise paragraphs paradigm, do you see individual paragraphs, not the whole paragraphs field, but 
individual paragraphs being able to be moved around into to these different um, regions in your layouts? Uh, okay. So that's actually, I'm going to re-ask your question, and you tell me if that's the question you yeah, asked. Okay. Um, and I'm not going to use paragraphs. I'm going to use images. So if I have multiple images in a single image field, can I place image one here styled this way and image two through n here in a gallery? Is that like a fair analysis? Like we're really talking about field deltas and whether or not I can specify. Yes, that's right. Yeah. 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 Um, it is definitely on our list of things to do. We have issues that cover it. Core has actually had a longstanding issue for making that possible in the normal field management layout or field display section. And I don't know how that's actually supposed to do things since it's a one-to-one -one relationship instead of like into one or what? Anyways, point being, uh, we are aware, and there is code to help make that happen. And yeah, long term, I would really like to have a multi-value image field where I can say, let's render the first one of those as like a header, and then you know, the next however many as a gallery or, or things like that. That becomes very powerful. Cool. And, and just one more quick last question. Sure. You, you said the, you've got your inline blocks. You mentioned config. Are, are they like? entities as content or are they actual sort of config that you, you were talking about there? Yeah, their content as config stored in content. As content, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so the block entity, right, uh, well, this is confusing. There are three different things called blocks in Drupal core, okay? There's the, okay, there's the block entity, which is a config entity that stores where your block plugin is placed within the, uh, block layout administration. So everything enumerated on this page, those are all block entities. Everything they reference are block plugins. And anything on this page is a custom block entity. So these things here are content entities. Okay, And when you save them, they get written to a table. That's pretty normal for content entities. And so the proposal is, let's not write those to a table. Let's like never save them at all, ever. And instead, what we do is when it's time to save the layouts, the layout naturally digs through every block that's associated with it, figures out what its config is, and stores that. Well, we would put a special wrapping block around this that asks the content entity what its values are, which it would then like basically send the two array values of that entity back, and then it sends it back as config, which then gets serialized and stored into content. Right. And the and and the the for, it's the form API that you're using to define the config. It's it's not like fields on an entity. No, it's fields it's, on it's, an entity. It is fields on an entity. It is okay. absolutely fields on an entity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every every entity has a two array method, and if you call that method, it gives you all of its values. And so uh, it's been a while since I've looked at it, but I think we're using that. Yeah. Okay. First, worth saying again, thank you so much. This is game changingly awesome. Second, I think that uh, the thing you saw with the settings tray not showing the SVGs for yeah. the layouts is a Safari bug. So if you have Chrome, uh, you can really? show that. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> can I get it in Firefox? I think so, yeah. Yeah, let's do that because I only have about a bajillion D tabs open in Chrome and we are not going to deal with all the YouTube videos that will start simultaneously playing. <laughs> Because that was a thing I totally glossed over, but is completely awesome. It is completely awesome. <laughs> and thank you for doing that, because if I get to show that, I'll be really happy. Uh, oh, I guess, well, all right. Yeah, all right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, so let me do a quick spiel. Yeah. Um, so these, uh, as you can see, some of them are actually quite complex, and uh, but they actually show the things we were interacting with. So you can see like the 6633 and the 3366, they actually look that way. And as he mentioned, these are SVG, not images. So these are actually generated from the plugin definitions that we saw in the layouts YAML file. So if I go back and I look at the layouts YAML file real, real quick here, 
um, you'll see that, let's look at 3366, it says icon map is gonna be first, second, second. And what it does is it says like, how many different things did you have? You had three. How many different things did you have? You had two, great. Let's divide it into groups of three in two sections, so one third, two thirds. And then it does the exact inverse for this one. It's first, first, second. So um, if you look at the API docs for this that are actually on the interface for the icon map, they have a really convoluted example that you're like, oh my gosh, I can do that, and it's pretty darn cool. It's also super cool because this almost maps identically to what CSS grid is, uh, which might open up the door for generating CSS and not having to write the twigs and stuff. It's an interesting possibility that we're nowhere close to. What was your other question? So it's not really a question, and I, I definitely want to make sure you understand I'm not uh, saying, hey, please do this for me, but yeah. I want to call these things out as issues we've made sure are in the issue queue in case they're of interest to other people. One is the concept of being able to um, curate the list of fields that is available within the the layout builder interface when you're putting content on the page because like in our use case, we don't necessarily want people to be able to place the powered by Drupal right. uh, block on a page. We'd like to like limit that to just the fields on that content type. But I, so having some control over that, I've, I know that's yep. in that issue queue. Yeah, um, so actually this is totally worth discussing um, and we won't discuss it here, but we've been talking about it since before Layout Builder even landed because we know we need this. Panelizer in D7 has this sort of functionality. The same thing's also true for sections. Like with section definitions, the way that we demoed here, you could totally imagine a world where you want to say, oh, articles have these sections available and pages have these sections available and this other content type has these sections available and within sections of these types on those content types, I want these blocks available and like have having some ability to limit those things and the granularity of it. I mean, it's probably gonna be a horrible user experience, um, but it would generate a, a really nice number one. of people, hopefully. Yes, for a very small number of people, and it builds a nicer user experience for a much larger number of people who you know, might do things you don't want them to do. Yeah, and then the second one was, which I, I know is in the issue queue too, is um, not having to go all or nothing with the layout builder paradigm, like being yeah. able to choose on a per entity type Yeah, I basis. totally hand waved that in this. Um, and so what he's saying is, um, I said can in a few places where I probably should have said does. So when you install layout builder, it completely hijacks every view mode of every content entity. Now what it does is it puts in place a single column version of it and puts the fields, the field blocks in the same order as the fields were in the same config. So you might have a very, very slight HTML change because you now have the one column wrapper around it instead of whatever it was Drupal was spitting out before. But we do absolutely take that over and there are issues about opting out of it or into it. I don't remember how that goes. But yes, there is there is an issue about you know adding an extra layer of config to that to say like, oh, no, 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 I don't want you to touch this thing. And I, I think if I'm not wrong, there's a few spots right now where you where it breaks if you try to manage the layout, like on a, on a taxonomy, maybe. Uh, I believe we've got all of those nailed right okay. now. I could be wrong, but last time I checked, we had, we had you know, played whack-a-mole properly with all of that, so. Cool. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, quick question about um, CSS. In yeah. your um, In your custom, in your layouts mm -hmm. module, um, you had the CSS in there, and it defined your breakpoints. Yep. Um, do, is there integration with, uh, or is there the ability to set your breakpoints at a site-wide level or at a, at, a, at a larger scale than than that custom CSS? Well, okay, so let's start with, I have not been a front-ender for a decade, but if I understand how Drupal does this appropriately, uh, your theme CSS is the one that wins at the end of the day, so if you were to redefine those same selectors, your theme CSS would win over what's shipped out of the, the, um, the layout's own stuff, um, but I would encourage you to never do that. Instead, I would encourage you to build the layouts you want because they are simple and roll your own CSS. Awesome, and um, thank you. And secondly, um, it, do you see this as um, sort of replacing 
or plugging into everywhere that any kind of layout is used, um, say like views and um, you've mentioned paragraphs, um, but d is this like the one to rule them all or is it just for to replace the block, block system? Um, no, I, the intent here is to definitely put a tool in the hands of everyone that allows them to take control of all of their content entities layouts. That is 100% the intent. Um, so, so I want to stress this again. If it's a content entity, you've got it today. Unless it's a really, really weird content entity that does really, really weird things we don't expect content entities to do, it should just work. Um, the one probable exception to that is maybe commerce and Boyan literally just walked out. Um, but, but even there, I think that there are some options that we have yet to explore. Um, so that being said, I want to con contrast that against views, which is config top to bottom, has no notion of, of any of the sorts of things that we injected by default. Would I like to see some sort of layout management for views? Yes, I would. Do I know for certain what I think that should look like? No, I don't, and I don't know anybody who does right now, mostly because we've been really heads down. We have some old things that I think would be a good starting point that exist in 7, and we could begin by looking at porting some of that stuff over. Um, but for the time being, uh, it's not really on the to-do list. It, it's like maybe 48 months or something. I don't know. <laughs> that's probably that's probably a bit too unambitious of me. It's probably like a year or more away before we even start talking about it. Thank you. Hi there. My uh, question is related to the inline blocks approach and kind of whether uh, that, uh, a site can make a decision of whether using that approach versus using some other approach to a create to create complex uh, mm -hmm. widgets that have yep. multiple fields. So would you agree or disagree that with the inline blocks approach that there's a, a UX cost to once you've created an inline block, going back and editing it? There's no way to get to a, the equivalent of a node edit page where you can see your fields uh, listed. Yeah, so um, I mean, the, like I would literally hit the layout on the node that it was on and then mouse over and hit configure and that would be its form. Right, so um, there's also even talk of doing quick edit support for it, which, full disclosure, I hate quick edit with the burning passion of a thousand suns. Um, maybe I shouldn't have gone on record with that, but too late. Um, we stopped recording a while ago, right? <laughs> uh, point being, uh, I think there are options there, um, and you know, I don't have final say on what happens there. Either the community does. Um, so, I, TBD, I think, is my response to that. Like, yes, it could. It also might not. <laughs> I, I think my objective is just to put something in place that, like, you don't have to click a whole bunch to get where you need to go, and the pattern should be consistent. So, if I have to click layout and then click the button I want to, you know, click the block I want to edit and it pops up in this window, I'm okay with that. That doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't need it to all happen right on where I'm viewing. If we can figure out how to do that right where we're viewing, it opens up a number of other really crazy ideas, um, but it almost certainly won't happen in, in phase one. And I could be totally wrong about that because it was Samuel Mortensen writing it and he knows his stuff. So, thanks. I have another um, paragraph related question. Yeah. So. I'm using paragraphs a lot in a site, and I have a lot of paragraphs, and each of the paragraphs are themed or structured or whatever. So the way I see this working is that I can get a layout. Well, first I start with my paragraph, and then I can, can I apply the layout builder to the paragraph? Yes. And then I build a layout, and then I can put my paragraph in the layout. Yes. So I have the layout with the paragraph with the layout. Yes. Inside, so it's everything's all nested together. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So um, just to kind of drive that home, like one of the things that is anticipated by the layouts module is that you're going to want to do, uh, 
by the paragraphs module is that you're going to want to do some layouts with paragraphs, but the way they expect this to happen a lot of times is by building kind of a wrapper paragraph that allows you to reference other paragraphs, which you then use as like some sort of placement. So you end up with nested, nested paragraphs. Um, and sometimes that can end up nesting many levels deep. And so you have rather simple granular sort of paragraph types that maybe only have an image or only have text or something else, much in the same way I spoke about custom block entities, right? Um, but, you know, in, in this paradigm, if you were to kind of take it up a level and say, you know what, I want a paragraph that has an image with some text next to it, you could totally go make that paragraph and then use the layout builder to make sure that it's laid out the way that you want. And so you might end up with like more paragraph types, but you would never end up necessarily having to do nested paragraph types if all you were doing was trying to use paragraphs for like kind of like alternating content layout sort of things. Is that a pretty good answer to your question? Great. Can we use layouts on the entity form display as well as the view display? No. Um, well, you can't use layout builder for it. But um, so in a some version that has already been released, uh, a module came out called field layout. And field layout, uh, I actually don't know the current status of. Um, and I don't think Tim Plunkett is here to speak about it. But Field layout can do that, but it only deals with one layout at a type at a time. So you mean you're not, one field? huh? Do you mean one field at a time? N no, no, no. I mean one layout. Like I pick one layout and then I can place my fields in there. I haven't actually used that module because I've been really heads down trying to help on this one. But that module can do that, and it's actually one of the reasons we haven't attempted to remove it from core because we didn't replace that functionality of it, so we couldn't kill it yet. Um, but there have definitely been conversations about it. No, we have not attempted to support it yet. Hey, thanks for the talk. Yeah. Um, I was a little confused on what um, ships with it, like what, what comes out of the box, and then what did you actually add? Great. Um, so yeah. So from one column right here, all the way down to this three column, 33, 34, 33, those are all shipped by core, okay? Everything else in this list is mine from the layouts module. And like I said, go grab the layouts module, take a look at it, dissect it, build your own stuff. If you like something I built, steal it from me. I reserve the right to break this module as much as I want, okay? So don't, don't use it, steal portions of it, namespace it for yourself, and go. Right, um, because this is this is like I said, this is the beginning of a visual language library for whatever site you're building, and so um, so yeah, the the rest of these like this image one all the way down to this four column here, these were all layouts I built and stuck in there and just tried to put some same defaults on so that I could use them, um, and yeah, th there's nothing else custom in this. Like, that's literally the only thing my yeah. module did. Yeah. Uh, so do you <clears throat> would you expect, like, um, libraries to pop up to where you can, like, hey, if you want this layout, here's the YAML file you need? I and, think you know, that is like that. totally likely, yeah. And, I mean, like, I have the best namespace for it, but I really want to be, like, an example for those to maybe follow. Um, because I'm not sure. I, I mean, like, I think it will happen. I'm, I'm kind of... Mm, undetermined as to whether it's a good or a bad thing. I think it's probably in the middle. Like some people will find it useful, but for you know, for most sites, uh, I think people are gonna probably build some custom ones anyways. And so what I think is more likely is that like agencies might have a little module in their back pocket that they just build custom layouts in and have a set of defaults that they tend to use. This is what I expect will happen the most. All right, thanks again. Yeah, absolutely. Fabulous work. Can these layouts live inside of a theme, the custom layouts? I believe the answer to that question is yes, but I'm going to discourage you from thinking about it that way, and here's why. Um, I have layouts that I've chosen to use. They are on a particular node or block or whatever, and 
uh, modules are a bit more permanently part of your build than your theme is. A theme is something you might choose to change. So if you change your theme and your themes provided your layouts, all of a sudden we have kind of a problem, right? Um, if that theme were still active, then perhaps the layouts are still there and available. But if you were to like forget that you had done that a year and a half, two years ago, and you're changing out themes and you say like, oh, I don't need that theme, uninstall it, like this has ramifications. Um, so, you know, to, to my thinking, and this is exclusively my own like reasoning about it, um, I would stick all of my layouts in a module together and just carry that stuff around with me and, and do what I said earlier. I would like if I were running an agency, I would just have a base set and I would build on it on a per site basis. You can make a module a dependency of a theme and tie them together. Uh, sure, I, I haven't done that, but if that's doable, yeah, great. Uh, based based on this. Um Last thing that you just said, you're saying that we should stop like using, for example, Zerb Foundation with the rows and columns and things like that. For example, for our company, we use Zerb Foundation a lot. Uh, it seems like that we should take a totally different direction now and just use the layouts this way instead of you know rows and columns in the theme layer. That's correct? Um, huh, you have asked a very loaded question. Uh, so I, I will speak only for myself. This is only my own opinion. I would not use a theme like that because I don't want a bunch of regions I have no intention of using. I find it confusing in a lot of cases. And um, I think that if I'm confused, that's likely to pass down to whoever ends up administering the site. Um, so for me, yeah, I want to provide like the most powerful solution in the least amount of like uh, mental baggage. And so, yeah, I mean, here, in, in fact, I, I will show this too. I didn't really show the, my, my theme much, but if I go into the info, like that's, that's my info YAML. It only has four regions, which I did mention a couple of times. Um, and like I only have a page template in this thing and it's just like a fairly sh like slimmed down version of the normal page template so it only has like these four regions in it. I mean everything I built on screen today was like 50 lines of CSS, this template and uh, two pre-process hooks that are like one-liners, right? And these were unnecessary, they were just things to, to like have some niceties. So like, yeah, I feel like I got a lot more bang for my buck. I have a lot less to, to, um, to maintain going forward. Um, I, of course I sub themed from classy, but like, I don't, I don't have to worry about upgrades there cause I'll get them with core. This was just a lot less mental baggage for the entire front end of the thing for me. And is what I did today practical? I don't know. We're gonna have to play and find out, but I think it's totally worth like kind of showing what I'm thinking and have other people play with it and validate it or tell me that I'm completely wrong. And either of those things would be fine. I just think that this is really, really compelling and worth exploring. Yes, absolutely. This is fantastic, but I was just like thinking that it kind of overlaps a lot of functionality. For example, again, Zerb Foundation, yep. you, know, no, does, totally. you know, and I was like, okay, where this should go and where we should stop that doing that, you know, yep. in the theme and start like using this. Let me technology. be more precise. In a perfect world where I had everything in Drupal the way that I wanted it, my themes would have one region. And I would just stack a couple of blocks in there the way that I wanted and use Layout Builder for everything else left to right. That, I, I think that's as clear an answer as I can give. I, I, I wouldn't be using those modules or those themes, um, but like, I don't want to discourage people from using them. I haven't been a front ender for the last decade, right? But to me, it's always about like reduction of what I have to think about, and I don't want to think about 20 regions or whatever the number is, right? Right, uh, last question. Um, yep. Is there a way to set up this layout thing based on content types and have like, okay, I want this layout for every single node of that content type? Yeah, um, I showed that at the very beginning. Uh, maybe, 
maybe some people came in a little late. But um, yeah, if we look at content types, <laughs> he can come up here. <laughs> Thank you. So on the content type, uh, this is just the article content type, mm -hmm. right? I went to manage display, I have the manage layout. And if I go into manage layout, I have control over the default that will be applied to everything. So nice. if I were to go create a new article, it would get this. I okay. could override that article okay, gotcha. with whatever I wanted, but it would get this to start. Okay, awesome. Make sense? Yeah, totally sense. Cool. Thank you very much. Hi, Chris. Hi. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely hey. amazing. Hey. Hi. Sorry about bad vision. Um, I'm working on a module called the modifiers module, which applies effects in. And at the moment, it, it can apply onto any entity. I'd just love to be able to get five or ten minutes of your time to work out how I can integrate that into, you know, the layout builder. Yeah, you'll I'll have to show it to me, but I'd be yes. more than happy to do can that. I, can I organize like five minutes of your yeah. time some, yeah. some way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, let me answer the rest of these sure. questions and then we'll do it somewhere nice on stage. Thank you so much. I just wondered uh, what does, how does one fit in with um, someone that's using like KSS or a component in the phase team? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, the front enders I've showed this to, like a lot of them have been really excited because, um, you know, I've had them say like, I don't need Pattern Lab anymore or things like this, right? Because, like I said, it's a visual library language where you build up the components you want to make available. So, like, like it's a self-contained component that renders in a very particular way every time you use it, and that's really powerful. Does it actually replace KSS or you know th these other tools? I don't know. Haven't been a front ender in the last decade, but I do sympathize with them, and I know the tools that I want. So I've been building the tools that I was pretty sure they could use, and the response has been generally very good. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to see and listen. That's yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Shoot.